All right, welcome back to another video. Um, we're finally going to get into the meat of the grammar today. Um, we started to get into it a little bit last time um, with this file line. Um, you know, these are really important because they determine what gets compiled into the kernel. So, you know, as we went over, if there's no fops, right, if there's no um, option list made out of this expression string, or like if fops is empty, then the file gets included every time. Um, maybe unless there's like a weird error, but like it's intended that sig signals your intent to include it every time. Um, with an fops, um, it gets included conditionally. And um, I wanted to go over actually that part in a little bit more detail before we move on to the machine definitions grammar um, because I kind of just glossed over it. Um, but this time I wrote a little mini grammar um, to show you, you know, uh, how that sort of works. Um, and let's just make, just to make sure. Okay, so um, I wrote this program using Lex and Yak uh, to show you sort of a mini um, expression grammar. Um, this is very similar to the one that is used in config. Um, we've got a type for like an expression node. So an expression node is either like an expression atom, uh, which is just something that's true or false, right? And so like in my case, because we don't have all the like other stuff, like the select tab or the dev base uh, tab, uh, to determine true or falsity, truth or falsity with, um, we're just gonna like put in true or false. Um, you can also use yes or no, um, or zero or one. And then we got some grouping operators. I added an alias for that with this less than and greater than sort of angle brackets. Um, white space ignored, new line just returns itself. Same thing with any other character. Um, that's, you know, not part of an and, an or, or a not, right? Just some aliases, um, basically. And yeah, like, if you are an atom, then you just, like, your type is gonna say whether you're false or true. Um, if you're a not, then this is gonna be just nothing. Um, this is going to be a um, the sub expression that you're taking the negation of. And like if you notice in the actual grammar, you'll see this sort of peculiarity that not only can negate atoms, um, whereas in this grammar, um, you can not a whole expression. You can negate a whole expression. Uh, I believe that's because they didn't want to deal with like saying that this is essentially non-associative. Um, because that's, I mean, I have to confess that I think this is right. I'm not totally sure. Um, I would prefer like to know a little bit more, but like if I don't have this non asoc line in, then Yak will complain that it has like shift um, reduce uh, ambiguities. Um, whereas if I put it in, everything's great. So um, in any event, like this can totally be done so I don't I'm not really sure why um, 
OpenBSD doesn't have this as an F expression. Um, but yeah, like you can see, okay, so all of this, like you can mostly just ignore um, this line and this line because these are just so that I can have extra new lines. I can just hit enter without having it complain and throw a syntax error at me. Um, and this is like this line, right? I could have just done this and just done one thing, have the whole grammar just be expression followed by a new line. But then I couldn't do multiple ones in a session. I'd have to like type the command over every time. So I threw in some stuff up here so that I could show you a couple different situations. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's a pretty simple grammar. And then this, it just creates the um, expression node. Um, I actually threw in some error checking, like a, like a good programmer. Um, and you know, set, uh, you know, you set everything and you return the expression node. Um, like, like it says to up here. Um, and then evaluate expression, this is a recursive function, right? So, um, for us, um, we have, yeah. We have a uh, short circuit evaluation. They don't in OpenBSD because uh, OpenBSD needs to create. Uh, you'll like as they evaluate this expression, they also turn it into right. So this is um, as you parse this right. This grammar actually creates a um, tree-like structure. Um, but at a certain point, if you include a needs flag or a needs count, it will need to turn that tree-like structure into a linear like linked list um, that says whether or not each uh, atom was true. Um, and yeah, that's so that they can, uh, put flags saying whether or not like, you know, because there's molten, you know, with these expressions, there's more than one way that a file could get included. And sometimes the file needs to know like, hey, did I get included because of these things or did I get included because of these other things? Um, we're not doing any of that here, but still, I don't know. Um, take a screenshot of this and, you know, code it yourself if you want to uh, see a little, uh, yeah, see a little recursion in action. But uh, let's get to the program. So for example, true just returns true. And then it prints out the result of the whole thing. Yes, one, those are all true. Um, zero, no, false. Those are all false. Um, not yes or not yes, um, not no, um, no and yes is false, right? No and no is still going to be false. Not, not, no is false. You know, like, um, it's, you know, pretty simple stuff. I mean, I don't know. It seems simple to me because I feel like I've been doing this kind of stuff for forever. Um, but yeah, um, an interesting exercise uh, if you know you're into that kind of stuff is uh, try to find. Um, so this grammar parses um, the not is the highest parse level. Um, the and is the next or has the highest precedence, then and, and then or has the lowest precedence. So, and it's pretty easy to reconfigure this, right? If you wanna have the or be higher than and, you just switch these two lines. Um, and so it's a pretty, I don't know. Um, it's a pretty interesting exercise to, um, 
find an expression where that matters, right? So this no and no or yes returns true under the current uh, specification because it's equivalent to no and no or yes and or true, false and false or true. So it does this first and returns false, obviously, but false or true is still true. Um, however, uh, if you switch the order of and and not, um, it ends up looking like no and no or yes, which is false. Um, so I guess I just did the exercise for you. But uh, you know, there's a couple more implicit exercises involving changing the uh, the precedence of not um, and with you know the others. Um, there's a total of you know eight different orders of those three precedences that you could have. So you know, um, <clears throat> see if you can't find expressions that are different um, for like all eight of them. You know. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, um, I just wanted to, like, run through that, and so, like, you know, whether or not this expression returns true or false, um, is going to determine whether the file gets included. If the file does get included, then, you know, that's when, like, okay, whatever, assuming we're on a needs count, um, we're gonna count, uh, or let's assume we're on a needs flag, uh, file, we're going to say give this a zero flag and like whatever attribute this was a zero flag and then whatever attribute this was we're going to give a flag of one um, which you can um, uh, so all the ones that just have one Thing in them that were included with just based on the presence of a single attribute um, are obviously going to have the one in there. Um, yeah, so here's one. Um, right, you can see like some of these attributes didn't have, um, like, weren't in there. So this is like, you know, a slightly more involved expression that determined whether or not some file got included. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting, uh, you know, but now that we have beaten the file uh, line to death, um, although, you know, I feel like it's kind of worth it because you... Uh, it determines what gets included in the kernel, you know? Seems vaguely important anyway. Uh, these object file lines aren't used because uh, OpenBSD doesn't have object files in their kernel. If it's in the kernel, it's gotta have free source code. Um, unencumbered source code. Source code with BSD license, I guess. So this is where we get into like capabilities of the machine. So, um, dev defs, right, is just a dev defs or dev def, or it's empty. And, like, what this means, like, so it's okay here that we have the general tag follow or preceding the um, concrete one down here because. We're not building a linked list, right? So on up here, right, we showed in that other grammar that this um, only picks out the two end uh, path names um, because you need to switch these. Here it doesn't. Um, here it doesn't matter because we're not doing anything with this over here. It's just a way of saying like dev defs is one or more dev defs, which is either a one def followed by a new line, an empty line, or some kind of error that occurs. So this is just special like error checking 
for uh, YY parse. So we're going to ignore that. Um, <laughs> Because, I don't know, I kind of assume everything goes well, at least when you're first trying to uh, understand a program. Um, so yeah, um, the one def is the real, you know, thing. This is like all of the various kinds of line that, lines that you can have in your machine definitions grammar, right? So this is the, you know, what you can do or, you know, what AMD64 capabilities OpenBSD has. We already described the file line. We said object isn't used. We described include as a mechanism of, you know, including other files. Notice that include, right, is, a, you know, YY parse uh, symbol. Um, or a yak symbol that has, you know, these two lex tokens and then calls the include function with this as its first argument and zero as the at end of file thing. Um, we already talked about the whole set machine thing um, and how that calls include with an at end of, or a end file token. Um, so yeah, the real stuff here is interface opt. So define word interface opt, and this is define an attribute. Um, so the attribute's name is gonna be this second thing, and this interface opt, which is gonna be an NV list, is the third thing. Um, by the way, I don't think I've actually shown what an NV list is. Um, this is what an NV list is. It's a linked list, right? So there's a pointer to an, the next NV list that has a name, and then its value is either a character pointer or just a void pointer, right? So if you want it to be like something that's not a string, you can have it point to anything you like. Um, and then it can also have an integer. So it's a name, a value, and an integer, really. Maybe they should be called NVI lists, name value integer lists, but whatever. Um, yeah, so that creates an attribute. Um, let's um, def attribute, right? Right here. Um, so we just allocate space for it. We put it in the attribute table. Um, so the important thing to note about ht insert is that if the thing that you're trying to put in that table, um, so and you put like this name and this is the pointer value, but if the name already exists in this attribute table, um, you return one, otherwise you return zero. So one is sort of like an error, so you put the error handling code right here. Um, we set the attribute's name to be the name that was given to us. Um, if the locator list is included, um, <clears throat> it can either be empty or it can, um, so there's three things. There's no locators, empty locators, and non-empty locators. So if, like this else is if we have no locators, in which case we say, okay, this is um, a plain attribute. Plain attribute means this is set to zero, basically. But it also means that it's not an attribute that you attach to. Um, and locs set to null. If it is a, uh, <clears throat> if it's non-null, then, um, the way that you distinguish between um, this, right? So if this pointer is list is to like something null, um, then that's considered no no locators. If it's a pointer to a pointer to null, then it's empty locators. But we don't want to have to deal with that like first null value, uh, so we just skip 
the first one and say that, hey, this actually is a non-empty locator list. Um, so one and like locs being null is empty locators. Zero and locs being null is no locators. Um, yeah, and then we count up the lo like how long the locator list length is. This gets set later. Um, when we are, um, this is supposed to be all of the dev bases, so all of the kinds of devices um, that attach to this, or that can attach to this uh, attribute, to this attachment attribute. Every device has to attach to an attribute. Um, you can say that you want to attach to a device, um, but what that really means is attach to the first attribute of this device that I'm like that I'm allowed to attach to. Um, and then these are all of the parents. Um, and then you return zero, assuming everything went well. So that's pretty simple. Um, let's see. Def opt word not used. Um, so let me see. Make sure that my since I you know have all these notes, might as well use them. Um, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah. So if an interface is given with it, it's an interface attribute. Otherwise, it's a plain attribute. Um, interface attribute means something can be attached to. I already said that. Specify locators. Um, oh yeah. So that attribute list is actually, um, or sorry, that locator list. This interface opt. Um, if you provide these um, and it's non-empty, then any device that is attaching to you uh, to this attribute has to provide some value for those locators. Um, that's all that means. Um, this device line defines a dev base, right? Um, <clears throat> What that means essentially is it's a kind of device that you know you might find on an AMD sixty four computer. Um, this uh, interface opt allows you to define an attribute with the same name as the dev base. So dev base would be like USB. Um, a device instance is going to be like USB zero or USB star, USB some number or USB star. Um, if you want to like also define uh, an attachment attribute with the same name as this dev base, that's allowed. And the way that you do that is by creating a locator list in the same way that you have one up there. And then. Um, Attributes, um, it's optional, so it could be empty, but these are other attributes that you want to associate with this dev base. They can be attachment attributes or plain attributes. Um, if they're attachment attributes, then that's like, you know, another way that you can attach to this dev base or to device instances of this dev base. Um, but yeah, basically, device lets us define a dev base. Um, yeah, um, you, yeah, you can only attach to the ones that are interface attributes, but you can have plain attributes right here. Um, and then like, so remember that select tab that we were talking about, if you create, uh, a device instance, uh, of this dev base, then all of, uh, the attri these attributes get added to select tab. Um, the dev base name itself also will be added. Whether or not you have an attribute like defined here or not. Um, so that's how you define a like kind of device, right? So here we're just talking about like general machine capabilities. So we're not gonna like talk about device instances, we're talking about kinds of devices. And then this attach line says, these are the attrib like these attach lines say, these are the attributes that you can attach um, 
this kind of device too, right? So you have to specify a dev base, and then you have to say this at list are the attachment style attributes that you like. You're saying you can attach to. So like the each of these lines implies like a certain sort of like code or something written in the kernel that allows like a USB thumb drive to attach to a USB hub, right? So there might be a USB hub attribute. Um, and then, okay, so this line defines a deva, um, or a deva struct. And if you don't include this dev attach opt thing, which is just with word, um, the name of the deva is going to be the same as the name of the dev base. Um, otherwise, it's going to be whatever dev attach you choose. These are the list of like attachment attributes that go with this deva, right? So each deva is a collection of ways to attach a dev base to attachment attributes. Um, and each deva has plain attributes of its own. Right, so whenever you attach a device to one of these um, attributes uh, or dev attach, or sorry, to one of these attachment attributes, um, the name of the deva gets added to the select tab, as well as any of these. Um, attributes. So uh, I think I say that over here um, in the attach line, how to define a device attachment, aka deva, um, what interface attributes a dev base can attach to. So the interface attributes that a dev base can attach to are already going to have to have been provided by some other uh, device um, or an option. So like the other things that get added to the select tab are options. Um, and so these are sort of like the seeds for like all kinds of things to get added to a kernel. Um, those are like the first things, but then everything else builds off of that. Um, so, um, dev base, yeah, so, yeah, so the attributes, opt attributes are plain attributes that are added to select tab if a device of type dev base attaches to any attribute in the at list. Also, the dev name gets added. Um, and I talked, Yeah, so you can't have multiple attached lines with the same uh, dev attach opt name or with the same dev name, which would either be this or this. Um, so if you have like different plain attributes that you want to include depending on which like attribute your dev base attaches to, um, you can include, you'll have to include those with different attributes uh, or with different attach lines. Um, max users, right? That's where you set max users variable or set the uh, default max users variable. Um, max partitions, where you set the max partitions variable. It's not even a function. It's just literally setting the max partitions variable. And so the last thing that's really important is pseudo device. This major thing is only important if you're including... Um, multiple configurations that aren't, or if you're using configurations that aren't doing swap generic. Um, so like each, uh, you can define like different like root devices and different swap devices and different uh, uh, dump, crash dumps um, devices um, for each, like, you know, for the same compilation of kernel. This matters for that, but in the default configuration, we're just doing swap generic, so it doesn't matter. Um, so pseudo device is the only thing that's left, and you still use def dev, the same function, 
you just like this thing is different right this is like not a pseudo device this is is a pseudo device and then you can only and then this has um yeah it just defines a pseudo device with this name um these attributes as well as the pseudo device name uh are added to select tab if this device is specified in the you know configuration uh these attributes uh like the ones up here though they can be uh, they can be either plain attributes or attachment attributes so like i'm pretty sure you can attach to a pseudo device but pseudo devices don't attach um so yeah so here we go this is where we actually do all of the magic uh, we do some error checking. We make sure that we haven't already defined this dev base before. Um, then we set that we're defining it now. Make sure that it doesn't have a bad attribute um, in its attribute list. And then here is where we create the attachment attribute um, of like the locator list that's given, right? So this loc list if you're talking about a normal device, not a pseudo device. This is where we create it and create the implicit implied attribute with the same name as the dev base. Um, and then we just add it to the front of the attribute list. Um, yeah, and we set it pseudo appropriately, attributes pr appropriately. Um, and then, yeah, so remember how I was talking about like in the um, define attributes, these are both null, they get set later. Well, here is where the parents get set. When you define a device, you say like, hey, these are all the attributes that you, know, you can attach to me with. Um, so we add this device to the list of uh, parents. And that's it. Um, let's see. Uh, and then in def dev attach, you would imagine, right? So this is saying, this is all the things that this dev base can, all the attributes that this dev base can attach to. You would probably guess that this is where we define the children. Um, <laughs> and uh, you'd be you'd be right. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, well, I'm pretty sure that's where it gets done. But well, let's go through. Let's go through this because this is the last function for this. The last thing we're going to do for this video is go through this function that handles actually all the code for attaching a device. Um, some error checking. Um, we, you know, get a new name for this like Deva if like one isn't already defined and it has to be it's just the name of the dev base um and if we've already defined it right that's no bueno um if we haven't like defined the dev, dev base that's also not good so um and we check and make sure that we're not a pseudo device because pseudo devices can't attach looks like you can attach to them but they can't attach to anything um and then here's where we set that this is actually defined some more error checking and then we uh loop through all of the attributes so remember there's two sets of attributes that get there's the atlas attributes and then there's this atters like atters attributes attribute in list um this one is has to be all plain attributes so that's what they're checking for here um we set up some fields for the like data these are the attributes these are like plain attributes list of attributes that this dev base can attach to what the dev base actually is um yeah and so then okay so this envy list of um this is actually 
Um, so they don't fill out the value part of the um, NV list. It's just the name part. The value part is all null. Um, so what that means basically is um, we have to go through and do it ourselves um, <laughs> because um, yeah, so you can see this new NX just means new NV list with a name and a next pointer, right? So when we do this sort of recursive <clears throat> deal, we just put the at names in. And then we look up a pointer to the actual attribute when we call def dev attach. And also notice that the recursion is cor um, Well, is it correct? Um, oh, yeah, so they just create the like at list in reverse. That's why it's correct, right? So you've already made an at list and then you make this the head of the list and have it point back to the rest of the at list. So it actually gets reversed when you parse this. Um, maybe I'll uh, write a parser that does it or modify the other uh, yak or modify my little simple yak program to show you that in action next time. Um, but yeah, in any case, uh, <laughs> yeah, and you can see here they actually do it um, in the correct, yeah, order. And this, so, <laughs> this right recursion does not mean correct. It means that the general, like, recursion part, right, the thing that's in its own definition um, is on the right. And that's what I was saying earlier, is that you have to use that to build the linked list in the correct order. If you wanna just reverse it, then you can totally do that if it doesn't matter. But localist order matters, must use right recursion. Hey, what do you know? Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, in any case, uh, these this at list does not, like they don't fill in the pointers to the attributes, they just fill in the names of the attributes. So um, that's what they're doing right here is they're, like looping through them. If the name is null, then that means we're at root. So we just put the NV pointer set equal, okay, and then this A is just an attribute. It's a local variable to this function. Um, we set it to null. That means at, that means we're at root. Um, so we're at like the very top of the tree. Um, and yeah, so um, otherwise we set this attribute and this NV pointer um, of this, like of the corresponding name to the attribute, at the actual attribute structure. Um, <clears throat> some error checking. Um, make sure that an attachment spec doesn't already say how to, how to attach this attribute, right? So you can't have two attributes or two devas, right? So each deva has a uh, device base that's associated with it. And uh, <clears throat> this device attachment, we start with our like device and its attachment head, right? So we look at our dev base and we look at its like the list, the head of all of its attachments. So each attachment is a uh, collection of attributes that you can attach to, um, or each deva is a collection of attributes that a dev base can attach to. Um, so we start at the head of those devas, and we move to the, like each deva on the same base, um, and we check and make sure that this like attribute that we're looking at currently is not on a previous um, previously defined devas at list, right? Because <clears throat> then like it wouldn't know which deva you were using, which is kind of important because it determines which attributes get 
included in the select tab, which determines which files get pulled in. Uh, so you want those to be mutually exclusive, essentially, is what they're making sure that you do. Um, if we're at root, we don't do this part, but if otherwise, um, <coughs> we make sure that um, our attri like attribute, um, that we're actually an attachment attribute, right? You can't be at a plain attribute. Um, and if we, you know, are actually at an attachment attribute or if our like attribute that we're looking at currently is an attachment attribute, then we look at its children and we add this dev base to its children, uh, which is what I wanted to check in the first place. Uh, <laughs> so that's cool. Um, and yeah, we, uh, yeah, then we, um, so this D app is a field for the dev base that is like points that keeps track of the end of the device attachments on the same base. So we just add this to this list that we loop through up here. Um, and we update this to point to like the next one. Um, and then we free some, some stuff if things went wrong. So yeah. That is it. Um, I, you know, I sort of skimmed over this, like, some, like, helper functions. You know, if you want to get into the nits, the nits, the nits and butts, nuts and bolts. There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you want to get into nuts and bolts of every little thing, you can read the code yourself, you know? Like, this isn't designed to uh, do that for you. Um, cause no one can do that for you, probably. I don't know. Um, maybe someday you'll just be able to download all the knowledge you want, but that day is not today. So, uh, this is just supposed to give you an overview to make that process a little easier if you want to, or just to let you, you know, learn a little bit, uh, about your computer without having to do a lot of effort. Um, but I can only really do that on overview. Um... At least, I don't know. I only want to do it on overview. Let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, hopefully you learned something. And, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm certainly uh, <clears throat> enjoying this. Um, it's fun to, like, pretend like I know stuff. Um, that's like, you know... There's a bunch of auxiliary definitions below this, but this is the main thing. Um, next time, we will go through um, this config spec, which is the main thing for like the configuration, which is like, hey, what do I want my personal kernel to be like? Um, not what are the overall capabilities of a particular machine? Uh, so this is the stuff that you're gonna see like in this actual um, configuration file, right? So um, oh, generic.np is pretty pretty bare because it just includes this one, um, right? You're gonna include like an even more generic uh, <laughs> configuration file, um, but yeah, like. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to see, right, um, in this, like, in your configuration file is, like, devices attaching at other devices or attributes. Um, so, yeah. This file actually isn't terribly long. It's only, like, 700 lines. Um, but yeah, it's, like, all that. Maybe a couple of options, um... Yeah, couple options. This config, swap generic. That's basically it. Um, <clears throat> once we get through uh, this, this next video, then we'll just be looking at, hey, what do we do with all this stuff? And that should go pretty quickly. So uh, there's a couple like bugs or maybe not bugs, but things that I think could be better. Um, 
that we'll get into not in the next video but in videos after that but uh, is that you know moving right along so uh hope you enjoyed this um let me know if there's anything that uh i can do for you and i will try my best not to totally ignore it uh yeah because i'm gonna be making all these videos before i put any of them up so you know um have a good one peace